One of the biggest regrets that I have whenever I was pipeline welding was dragging up on a job whenever I was getting tons of experience. By the way, dragging up means quitting, quitting a job where I was getting tons of super valuable experience. I was about 23 years old. I was running beads on some 12 inch 188 wall in Colorado and they put me up there running beads. For those of you that don't know what running beads means, that just means putting the first pass in a piece of pipe and doing just that pass all day every day for however long it takes to lay said amount of uh, miles or footage of pipe. The pipeline process is real similar to an assembly line or at least with laying main line it is. The difference between pipeline production and like uh, factory production is is like in a factory the worker stays in one place and the product moves for the most part well on pipeline it's the total opposite on pipeline the welders and the workers move and the product stays in one place just to fill you in on the pipeline process but today i want to share with you one of the biggest tips i got on that job and then i regretfully quit that job to go on to another job i'm super thankful for that he was more or less the weld boss on that job that taught me this because previous to this job all I had ever welded on was like 375 wall which is like standard wall the wall thickness and on this job like I said it was 12 inch 188 wall so it was real thin and it, it changed the game when it comes to to putting a bead in and just so everyone is aware the main objective to putting a root pass in anything plate pipe doesn't matter but the main objective when putting in a root pass or the bead is to break down each edge on that back here. You're just wanting to tie the two pieces of metal together. That's the um, like most simplest way I can describe it. So, and, and, and that really sunk in on that job whenever he taught me this. He put on his hood and he come up there and grabbed my stinger and he, he was real, let me just say this, this is the tip right here. He was real light on his hand and he moved fairly quick. The best way I know how to describe what he taught me was is travel speed and thickness of material you're welding on. So since it was a thin piece of material, it didn't take much heat for this 186010 to burn off those edges while putting in the bead. So once the edges were burned off, he just kept moving. That advice that he gave me and what he showed me really taught me the main objective of running beads, which is just to tie, just to break down the edges and move on. That's the most important piece of advice that you'll get out of this video, and I wanted to share it with you along with a couple of other uh, things that I've learned about running a bead. But the main deal is, is whenever you're running a bead, even if it is on thicker wall pipe, as long as you have the proper space and not too thick of a landing, the landing is your face before you join the two pieces of pipe, you put a flat spot on the end of your your two bevels as long as that's not too thick and general practice is to put the same amount of land as you do the uh, the gap so in this case I put a about a penny thickness landing and about a penny thickness gap and I'm using a 1 8 60 10 5p plus what I want you to get out of is is what I do here like I'm literally going to show you what I'm what I'm doing out here not through the lens but what I'm doing out here so if you strike up, you tie into your top tack, and you fall into your keyhole, the keyhole is where you pulled out. For those of you who don't know where you, where you stopped, like it would be your crater in any other uh, pass. And so when you fall into your keyhole, sometimes if your landing is thin because you ground back too far, or if your, uh, you know, your gap gets a little bit wide, you will potentially blow a hole or, or your, your gap will get wide like it won't it won't want to come together like it won't want to sew up so there's several different variables obviously but but as long as you're not too hot on your machine and your gaps not just horrible sometimes you can just lift your rod out of the bevel like so and that's kind of dramatic but I mean just like pull out a little bit and that'll allow your your welding rod to start grabbing on to to some of your thicker material because your bevel's like this well when you pull your rod out it's grabbing onto the thicker parts of your of your pipe you actually have something to weld to that way so pull out but also take your travel speed which is 
this right here, travel speed, maybe maybe pick it up a little bit, speed it up, press on the gas. As long as you're you're breaking down the bevels, that's the objective of a bead. So that's my greatest piece of advice is being light on the rod. In other words, if you have to do this number, that's like, that means most likely you need to grind or something you shouldn't, or you might need to turn your machine up a little bit. Again, there's a lot of different variables, so stick with me here. Try not to bend the welding rod. You shouldn't have to bend it, just barely. Let the rod do the work, trust the rod. And when I say it's all in the fingertips, that's what I mean. Like, I don't have a whip on this uh, set of leads, but a whip is good too for running beads. A whip just means a smaller uh, lead for about 15 or 20 foot tied to your stinger. That way your stinger's lighter. And so your stinger's light, and then you just, you just let that rod do the work, and you should be able to put a bead in literally with just two or three fingers. Like these first three fingers, thumb, pointy finger, and my middle finger. I don't even have my pinky or my other finger on the stinger, and that should be all you need to break down the edges of, of, your, uh, of, your, of the back of your, your weld here. We call it breaking down the shoulders, but I mean, you're just breaking down the edge. You know, as long as you're breaking down that straight line that you have back there, that's all you need to do with the bead, move on. That's kind of a, a tip that I have in any situation, but that really works for, for whenever you're, you're running beads. So that's one of my pieces of advice. And another thing for, for any type of fabrication, whether you're running beads or if you're just on fabrication on some heavier wall, one thing you can do, another guy taught me this, before I went on that main line in Colorado. I was welding on a bunch of standard wall, like I said, and my tendency was always to point my rod, which isn't, it's not bad to do that necessarily. You know, that was just my tendency is to point it. Like if my rod was trying to toenail, toenailing just means where your rod tries to burn to one side and it doesn't want to tie into the other side. I would always point it, try to point it to the side so the metal would go that away. And that works a lot of times. That's all fine and dandy, but one of the guys that I worked for, he told me to shift, take the whole rod, instead of leaning it, take the whole rod and shift it like this. So push this way and push that way. Again, that's dramatic, but I just want you to see what I mean. So like, instead of doing this number, do this number, but small movements, you know, as you're, as you're moving down the pipe and obviously feeding your rod because it's stick, so this is gonna burn up. So, I mean, just right there, that's three different variables, travel speed, pushing in and you're worried about this. So all that becomes second nature, the more experience you have. If you've been following, following me long, you know that I encourage hood time because ultimately to get better at this, you're gonna have to put your hood down and, and burn some rods. But I know these tips were helpful t for me whenever I started welding pipe. So I wanted to pass them along to you and uh, I hope it was helpful. I uh, hope y'all are staying cool this week. And for more helpful resources, check out our website, arosswelding.com. And if you have any questions or you want to get notified whenever the pipe fence course is open for enrollment or whenever any other courses open up, because we are working on one more this year that we hope to have out at some point this year. If you want to get notified when these courses are available or open for enrollment, you can text the word trade school to 405-643-7176. Thanks again for your support. Thanks for being here every week. And remember, learn something every day.